need credits. Once upon a time. Narrating. Is this movie going to do all the sins? Also, pop-up books. And yeah, you read a pop-up book you loved when you were a little kid, but my experience was that they never worked correctly, and I always had to help the pop-out parts get into position, which kind of ruined the experience. With whom he would share true love's kiss. F***ing true love is the biggest lie the movie's ever sold you. True love does not happen on sight, or from a kiss, or because someone paid you a million dollars to sleep with your wife. It happens through hard f***ing work. And I'm tired of fairy tales selling the lie that that is easy. Does he have to have lips? Yes, Discount Bambi. Without lips, there are at least three things he won't be able to do that I was really looking forward to. Wait, I just thought of another one. Waking a sleeping animal for your own enjoyment. Seriously, this is an owl fowl of the highest order, and I wouldn't blame Hedwig or his angry inch if he retaliated with full force. She's singing about true love and says, that's the reason we need lips so much, for lips are the only things that touch, and let's just say I'm reasonably sure this girl is a virgin. This lip brigade line appears to be passing a giant mushroom and pine cone for her choices after the comb, neither of which look anything like a mouth. But somehow her next options are Peapod, Discount Sebastian, and an apple that the director put in there so we would know he's an asshole for making all this shit appear out of thin air. This entire song's message is find who you love through true love's kiss, and it feels kind of messed up. Like, are we supposed to just go around kissing people? What if my true love never kisses me, but a slew of true heartache people do? How many people am I allowed to kiss on my way to finding true love before I just get a reputation or a prison sentence? Amazing, sire! Your tenth troll this month! Thing my minions say to me while reading me our comment section somehow ends up in the script. This prince guy starts singing the same exact song the girl was singing earlier. Someone stole a song, folks, and I'm not talking about Lady Gaga ripping off Madonna with Born This Way. I'm supposed to eat you! What the f***? This movie does not understand weight. This gag only works when the heavy person lets go and the lightweight person is still holding on. Go back to school, movie. <laughs> I guess technically you could say he caught her, but really it's just that she landed on him and he didn't drop her. Also, she says, oh my gosh, instead of, ow, sh my f***ing tailbone. We shall be married in the morning. Ross Geller. Oh, so this is the little forest rat who thinks she can steal my throne. Little forest rat, I don't buy that. If only they'd look closer. I implore you, look at this wheel, people. It does not physics. It does not even science a tiny bit. A single spiral spoke in a wheel otherwise made of air is a death trap. This wheel offers no support. Clown carriages. Where did you send her? To a place where there are no happily ever afters. So animated characters know about our world? Do they know they're animated? Or in a movie? Is it possible Jasmine knows I exist? I mean, just as one example. Giselle, how's the peeping? Jizzy, 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 jizzy. Apparently, whatever magic magically transformed you also magically magic some magic earrings to complete your magic ensemble. Who knew magical portals were so generous? Look, I know it's New York City where weird shit happens all the time, but even in New York City, people would be wigging out about a goddamn princess emerging from the sewer in the middle of Times Square. Good thing all this traffic didn't start trafficking until she had plenty of manhole escape and bewilderment time. Yes, New York City pedestrian traffic is heavy. No, it cannot literally pick up and carry a person like ants do with potato chips. Jesus. Literally none of these people give a sh about her and would even pause to let her run back up the stairs if it meant they didn't have to deal with her screaming anymore. How does she get on the subway in Times Square because a sea of people carried her there and then not get off until she was in a place so lonely and desolate there's literally no one else around? And how did she pay for her fare? New Yorkers aren't, like, constantly paying fares for entitled white princesses riding the subway for the first time. Sudden and dramatically timed downpour is sudden and dramatically timed. This six-year-old gets out of a car in New York City because she sees someone on a billboard in a princess dress. That's it. That's the reason. This is a very naughty child. Or possibly a very negligent father who has yet to teach the dangers of New York City streets to his daughter. Just want to point out that this cab driver is taking mind their own damn business to the next level right now. Not a peep or movement after the child ran out of the vehicle and then was chased by her dad, who caught a princess who fell from a billboard. Driver's just like, not my circus, not my monkeys. Which is very New York-like, but still probably a sin. Not sure if you saw that, but one strike of lightning was supposed to convince us that he absolutely had to take her into his home instead of one of many other options that would probably seem more appropriate, and viewer, I remain unconvinced. But I must have looked very far because I fell. You were pushed, like hard. There's no way you think you fell, and now I can't trust anything you say. She can't fit the dress through this huge doorway, even though she fit it through the manhole and the subway doors and climbed a f***ing ladder in it. This doorway sh is a lie, and the joke isn't even very original. Just so we're clear on what's happening here, he's calling a car for her, stares at her while she's sleeping, has some sort of 
thought or realization and decides to let her stay the night. I think the movie wants us to see this as the seed of love. There is a whole other garden of seeds that make this moment darkly ambiguous at best. He tells his daughter he wants her to sleep in his room tonight because there's a strange woman on the couch, but then no one turns off the daughter's lamps. The chipmunk can't speak English after going through the portal, and that is really f***ing arbitrary. All the cartoons that come through here become real versions of their cartoon selves, but f***ing language shouldn't have anything to do with it. If you jump on my car in traffic, I will get out and beat the s*** out of you with my five iron. But if we're in the real world now, why does this work at all? We know that Pip couldn't talk, so if there are some parts of the fantasy princess world that work here, how do we know where the movie draws that line? Why are these the only animals in New York that came? Where are stray dogs, cats, police horses, ants, snakes, sewer gators? Gondor has called for aid. Rohan must answer. No one will be seated during the Joe's apartment portion of the movie. She's now singing about emptying the vacuum, but how the hell does she even know what that is? Last night she was knocking on a billboard because she thought it was an actual castle, but today she's familiar with the canister emptying process of the Bissell line? I'm beginning to think consistency might be an issue with this movie. I humbly submit that no type of soap or cleaner would be sufficient if it's applied by literal rat's asses. Rats passing off dishes to pigeons. That is like a disease assembly line, but we're supposed to be all happy and What is it? Come, you have to come see me! What is it? Man, a kid version of the you better come take a look at this cliche is somehow even more annoying. Oh, I hope you had nice dreams. That's great. Can you turn off the faucet and stop wasting water? Where does the water come from? Oh, for Pete's sake, Giselle, you just sang a song about cleaning out the shower drain. Princess in the streets, plumber in the song sheets, I guess. This six-year-old girl hears knocks at the front door and opens it immediately. And I submit this dude is the very worst father ever put to film. I feel like Giselle is so overly friendly to Nancy that Nancy should not immediately assume it's a person McDreamy is cheating with. You made a dress out of my curtains? This is an absolute party foul that Giselle should easily know about. You don't cut other people's curtains in cartoon land just to make a dress, do you? This asshole has three lamps just in his CD stereo corner. The easiest way to date your movie is to shoot in Times Square, where huge ads for old Broadway shows like Hairspray and The Wedding Singer will stand out like sore thumbs. Even if it could penetrate the top of this bus, do you realize how long that sword would have to be to reap this bag of birdseed in the lap of a seated passenger in this bus? Prince Edward isn't packing that much in his scabbard, I promise. But also, four inches from horrific murder. Wait, what? She can just use any water to see into the real world? How does she even know Giselle is here right now? And if that fish can see her, can't everyone else in this office? This movie would be even more fun if it actually had some clear rules and stuck to them. You cannot just put a chef's hat on and go about inspecting dishes in a restaurant this nice. At an Applebee's, yes. At a fine dining spot, no. Happily ever after, my leader. In case you needed a visual example of the power of boners, Disney is here to help. I swear we are just seconds away from seeing Peter Pettigrew's O face here. And when the hands of the clock strike twelve. Expositional soup! Oh sure, our world reduces you from talking to just pipsqueaks, but you can still completely change your shape when the joke requires it. It's almost like the universe's laws are no longer immutable, but determined by some sort of script. Being this, entertained by fish. I can't even find this place she comes from. What place? Andalusia. Andalasia. Yeah, whatever, I've called every travel agent. Actually, if you had asked travel agents about Andalusia, they would have told you it's in Spain, because it is. She told me it's just beyond the meadows of joy and the valley of contentment. Yeah, my college girlfriend's G-spot was in the same place. Impossible. Possible to find, I promise you. Lots of people have tried. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Is she yeah. actually crying? It's just so sad. This movie is charming, but you forget how far it stretches that charm with bloated bullshit like this scene. I just can't handle it. Robert? Just go. I feel like there's gotta be some middle ground between letting her sleep on your couch and Encino manning her in New York City. Sudden change of heart cliche. This f***ing nightmare slinky bull. I swear to God, if this stilt-wearing mother tried to hug me, he'd get body checked into that f***ing pond over there. How can the potion be so fast to burn the bike helmet, but never once burn the wooden stick the apple was on? Magical steel drum band appears and already knows the song. It's sickening. This Caribbean band is made up of three people of color, and then they get joined by Toby Keith. Also, not Toby Keith is so into the music, he leaves behind his guitar case and all his busking earnings that were in said guitar case. What a loser Toby Keith is. This is the sound of music. I don't care what you say, I know what I know. I swear I wasn't going to keep bringing this up, but this movie is taunting me. Random strangers with identical flowers, prepared matching dance moves, orchestral accompaniment, songs that continue straight into the chorus despite completely changing environments. Damn it, movie! Is this the real world or not? Six old-ass white couples dancing to island music. They've attracted a big enough crowd at this point that this should be on the evening news. Okay, that's enough. Time to skip. The construction workers stop working to sing and dance along, and that is a problem. That's it. I give up. You broke reality. You wouldn't believe where I am right now. I'm in Central Park, that place New Yorkers don't know about and never go to. You won't believe how big it is. How did they pay for this hotel room? 
Say you want you want about Disney, but stringing up a chipmunk crucifixion style in a closet is definitely a choice. Why do movies insist on doing this? Why must we always blow up the size of the moon to comically large proportions? Who are the ad wizards that came up with this sh**? Mere seconds ago, that pepper cap was firmly on your finger, and you're just screwing it back on? I don't know where your finger has been, but I know where mine has been, and this is why you should never use the restaurant table dispensers, ever. Guys, we've been at this restaurant for at least a minute already, and why is everyone pretending this uncut, untouched pizza doesn't exist? Guys, there's a pizza at the table. Eat the f***ing pizza. Ooh, it looks yummy. Yeah, be careful. It's poisonous. You're joking. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a stupid joke, and you are stupid for saying it. He swings the broom trying to hit the chipmunk, and I'm still wondering how he was able to pose as a waiter and get the bartender to make a drink and then poison said drink and bring it to the table, all without an actual employee of this Italian restaurant spotting him or calling him out. Motherfucker, you cannot throw a pizza on a pizza tray like it's a frisbee and have that travel together without the pizza and the tray separating profoundly. I'll help you out here. See, it's funny because the dog is peeing on him. No other reason, just dog piss. But hilarious, right? Also, the owner of this animal should be jailed. She gets angry for the first time ever, enjoys it, then touches Can't Buy Me Love's chest all sexy-like, and what the f*** is happening right now? She's experienced a new emotion and anger, and so now she has to immediately get horny, too? I know we're supposed to be interested in Giselle's emotional journey here, but I'm more concerned with what these stuffed animals have done to Green Sock Monkey. This is a murder scene back here, and you're all just going on with your lives? He sees she's cut up another non-clothing piece of fabric to make a dress, and he smiles. He smiles! F***ing hell, dude, she is ruining your Parkside apartment one dress at a time. Teach this girl how to laundry. Also, do they never wash clothes in Cartoon Land? Does she sew a new dress every day there? Because I don't think she does. She doesn't know how to wash clothes, but she can make coffee. Shredded wheat. You look beautiful. Christ. I'm gonna really miss her. Oh, for f***'s sake, you knew her for one day, little girl. And she brought rats into your house on purpose. I get that the movie knows how silly and convenient this water delivery is, and maybe that's the point. But honestly, sending this kind of stuff is as close as I'll ever get to true love's kiss, so let me have my moment, okay? <laughs> Sigh. I have something better than a fairy godmother. Where is the dad right now? How did Giselle get inside the apartment? We cut straight from here to shopping, and I still have questions! For a movie that pretends to subvert the fairy tale tropes, you sure did go all out with your women be shopping montage, huh? Movie makes a big f***ing deal out of her arrival and her power, and I'm just over here like, then why did she need to push the girl down a well to begin with if she's this powerful? Mr. N is on the line telling us his sweetie pie is acting a little distant. AM radio. Actually, let's just go with radio. Also, I've held off on this through too many different outfits and accents, but this outfit, as a cab driver, it's time. That's racist. How did all these people learn this very elaborate dance? These two didn't even know they were going to this thing until like a day ago. Did they even have time to practice? And this isn't some musical fever dream the movie's trying to get away with. I'd like to ask each gentleman to invite a lady he did not accompany this evening to dance the king and queen's waltz. You know, this setup is so forced, I would have more respect for the movie if the MC would have just said, ladies and gentlemen, we need a turning point moment for our protagonists, so we've made up a dance where people have to dance with someone who isn't their date to force them together and action. I f***ing need you tonight, forever's gonna stop. Also, this waltz is on for some time. While they fall in love while dancing, I have to point out that this movie had her reject the prince because one day isn't enough time to know who your true love is, but then after knowing Patrick Dempsey for one day, she knew she loved him enough to leave the prince for. My point is, no one in this movie is actually in love and they are all just fooling themselves. It's Nancy that does the kissing here, but Giselle still reacts as though Robert and Nancy are both now fully in love and it's stupid. Apple TV Plus. I mean, there's a button right there. True love's kiss. All this nauseating talk of true love's kiss. It really does bring out the worst in me. Well, this movie sure did go from silly allegory to what the f super fast, huh? The queen dragon thing told Giselle to follow her and is now climbing up several stories of a building on the outside and somehow Giselle f***ing does. F***ing no. That's it. This movie has broken me. I'm done. This movie can eat a dick. A bag of dicks, the world's biggest dick, the dick of a frozen mastodon, God's dick, and literally every dick in existence. You like the song, so you convince yourself the rest of the movie was good, and I will never forgive you. And of course, these two have to find each other, because God forbid someone exists in this world without a significant other. This movie is exactly the kind of princess nonsense it thinks it's skewering. Oh well, maybe someday Disney will find a way to let it go. Right, Adina? The movie ends on a series of pop-up book montages that are so insipid I only feel good about myself by showing them to you in super speed. It was a run by fruiting. Does he have to have lips? Of course. I love my lips. This is Sparta! Oh! oh. 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 oh.
Uh, it's not what it looks like. Oh, wouldn't she just love to come crawling back here and steal my crown? I teach part-time at Alamance Junior College. English 101 and beginning composition. What are you waiting for? Is this gonna become a regular thing with you? You know how to fix it. Are you crying? Are you crying? Oh. Are you crying? <laughs> You can't just give people money. Please, may we feed the birds? Go back, go back. Please. When was the last time, yeah, you, mm, you, yeah? What is it? It's me, Mario. <laughs> the road will be rough. I have a ball. There's no turning back. Guess I'll have to roll with the punches. Easy won't be part of the equation. Promise. Gotta warn you. Going into the belly of the beast. Danger at every turn. I eat danger for breakfast. 